deep learning um, excels at supervised learning. And it has also been making rapid advances in other paradigms of machine learning. But there are tasks that remain intrinsically difficult to tackle by this paradigm. So there are a couple of problems which are more natural fit to other models. For instance, probabilistic graphical models. So let's talk about these because, as you will see, these can be trained and used efficiently by using quantum resources. So our primary interest is Markov networks. But to get there, let's go through a couple of things. So when we talk about machine learning, we can talk about discriminative problems, where the task is this estimation of this, uh, of this conditional probability distribution. So for instance, given an image, tell me what's in the image. So this is where deep learning is excellent. A different task is to learn the actual probability distribution of your data instances, the underlying manifold, or the joint probability distribution with some label. So these are hard problems. And there are a couple of instances where you can do this by deep learning, but there are others where you cannot. And probabilistic graphical models are very good at capturing the sparsity structure between random variables. And that way they model these probability distributions. There are two main types of probabilistic graphical models. One, where the, the underlying graph is directed. These are called Bayesian networks. So for instance, if you have an observation that your grass is wet and you have two other random variables, which one says that the sprinkler is, was on or off, and the other one, whether it was raining, then you can make backward inference and ask, hey, given that the grass is wet, what's the probability that it was raining? So these are the kind of queries that would be difficult to solve by a neural network. The other large class is called Markov networks, which are undirected. So there's no, any, there's no implication for any kind of causation or, or direction of causation. So in this case, for instance, we can have three patients who have a certain kind of disease, and we don't know how they infected each other, but we know that there was some infection pattern going on. So again, we can analyze the network and make statements. So let's take a, a look how this sparse modeling happens. So what we are after is conditional independence. So we call two random variables conditionally independent, given a third random variable. If you can factorize this joint probability distribution of x and y given z into individual parts. So it will be just px given z and py given z. It doesn't mean that they are, they are independent, but conditioned on this third random variable, they are independent. So for instance, given four random variables, uh, x1 is conditionally independent from x3 and x4 given x2. So this, this graph, this undirected graph, captures this independent structure or the remaining dependencies. And it turns out that what you can do is define energy functions on the clicks of this graph. So for instance, this is a k1 which means a complete, a complete graph on a single node, which is just the node itself, and say that if it takes the value 1, it has some certain energy, and if it takes the value 0, then it has a different energy. Then you can assign some energy value also to configurations over K2s, or two nodes that contain an edge, or that are connected by an edge. And you see that there's also a K2 here, and another one here, and another one here. So here you have a total of four uh, K2s. And finally, you also have this triangle, which is a complete graph on three nodes. It's a click of size three. And your probability distribution factorizes over these clicks. So as long as you can define an energy function that could model your probability distribution over these clicks, you can describe the full joint probability distribution. And this should look familiar because this has a very similar structure to a thermal state, the state that we get after equilibration in an open quantum system, or what we can approximate by the quantum approximate thermalization protocol. In fact, under very mild assumptions, there's a correspondence between Markov networks and the probability distributions they can describe and Boltzmann distributions. 
And there are a couple of special cases. So when you think about it, the Ising model is, is a special case. So in this case, our binary, our random variables are all binary. And we only have K2s, we don't have K3s. And a special case of Ising models, and hence Markov networks, are Boltzmann machines. Here you partition your, your Ising spins into two categories. One are called visible ones, and the others are called hidden ones. And what you do is you define the same energy function as you would do uh, for, for an ordinary Markov network, and, but you're only interested in reproducing some probability distribution here on the visible nodes. So the hidden nodes are only there to help you mitigate correlations between these random variables. So you marginalize out over the hidden nodes to get the probability distribution that you're interested in. These are very powerful methods, and they are expensive to train on classical computers. So this is one area where quantum computers can help. 